뿐입니다. LG 트롬 스타일러 저는 웨일 브라우저로 바꿨습니다. 새 창을 열 필요 없이 Hey everyone, this is Sean and today I want to talk about Windows 10 and specifically how to optimize your experience as a touchscreen user on a Surface or any other Windows tablet. Things like tablet mode, um, how to use custom gestures to swipe between desktops, how to make apps full screen, hiding the taskbar, how to adjust the brightness with a swipe, uh, how to bring up Cortana, and a bunch of other stuff. So you definitely don't want to miss this video. Uh, so let's dive right in. Okay, so the first thing I would recommend doing if you use a touchscreen or Surface is to have the start menu be full screen. In start settings, you'll see this setting right here, use start full screen. Now when that's turned off, then your start menu will be a lot smaller like this. And like I said, I don't think it makes sense. You're never gonna use this other space. So might as well just set it to be a full screen. Okay, great. So now I have a full screen start menu. These three lines at the top bring up some of the other options that you can have. And if you want to look at all apps, all you have to do is just swipe up from the middle here. And now you have all apps down over here. Okay. If you click on an alphabet, you can see uh, an alphabetic order. So you can touch on any letter to be able to see the apps that are in that alphabet. Now, if you're a touchscreen user, especially on Windows 10, you need to download this program from the Windows Store. It's called Touch Me Gesture Studio. Okay. Touch Me Gesture Studio is awesome and it's in my opinion essential if you're on Windows 10 it allows you to do a lot of cool things all right so do look at my video description I include a link to touch me gesture studio so in Windows 10 you have the ability to change your brightness here but they only happen in increments of 25% if you want something more continuous you can set a gesture to slowly bring down the brightness and slowly bring up the brightness just as if you're turning a knob okay so you can see up here the brightness slider going up and down okay and this makes it nice to really customize your level of brightness uh, the other thing really nice about Windows 10 is its ability to have multiple desktops so if you swipe from the side you can see you can have multiple desktops I can actually create a whole bunch of desktops so here you can see I have my school desktop I've got calculators I've got my equations over here I've got my uh, word documents I can also have a hobby desktop you know where if I don't want it to be cluttered I just want to work on videos or my music I can have that or maybe I just want something to have some fun so a few web browsers open maybe some games open now I've set up this gesture to be able to swipe between the desktops okay so let me show you that so again you want to go into touch me gesture studio the the shortcut key for swiping between desktops is Windows control left and Windows control right so if you have a keyboard you can do that to swipe between desktops I use Touch Me Gesture Studio to assign the three finger swipe right and the three finger swipe left. So now all of a sudden I can swipe really easy between multiple desktop. Now if you swipe in over here from the right left hand side then you can see all your desktops down here and you can easily swap between desktops using that method as well. But again you can use your three fingers to swipe between desktops and this just feels so natural it feels so fluid and I just absolutely love it. Okay, another thing I've done with Touch Me Gesture Studio is Windows C, which brings up Cortana to listen to you. Okay, now I know you can uh, set Cortana to listen to you all the time by saying, hey Cortana, but I didn't want that. Uh, to me, the gesture makes it really easy. What do you think about Google Now? It doesn't have much to say, but it's helpful. Uh, it's a pretty funny response, so let's try something else. Open Netflix, please. Sure. Here's Netflix. Great. So you can see you can open uh, apps. It can uh, you can answer, ask math questions, do anything on the fly, and having that gesture makes it really, really fast. Something else I wanted to show you is that in some of these uh, older apps, uh, what you can do you know, when you expand it, make it full screen, you can uh, swipe down from the top, and you'll see this little uh, bar. Okay. And when you swipe down, you can see some other options. Uh, search, share, settings, app commands uh, will bring up the kind of the settings menu. So, so just to be aware of that, when your app is in full screen, you know, taking advantage of that little bar that comes down will allow you to have kind of greater control over that app. All right. Now, speaking of full screen apps, 
uh, the modern Windows 10 apps can be a little bit of a pain to use in full screen. So for example, here's the new Groove Music app that you can't actually make it so that it's completely full screen. Even in tablet mode, which I'm going to talk about more in a second, uh, you can see that the taskbar is still down here. Okay, so watch what I'm about to show you. Three fingers swipe down. Boom. The taskbar is gone. I have a full, immersive, nice, full screen. All right, and then if I want the taskbar back, all I have to do is swipe down again, three fingers, boom, there's the taskbar. All right, so to pull off the taskbar trick, it's a little bit more tricky. You do need Touch Me Gesture Studio, but you also need something else called Auto Hotkey. See my video description for how to download that. And then you have to also download this uh, one file called taskbar.ahk. Okay, and again, the link to that is in my video description. Then what this does is it gives you a keyboard command, Control Alternate. I think it's Control Alternate F, and that keyboard command basically uh, hides and unhides the taskbar. All right. Then you use Touch Me Gesture Studio to uh, make it so that the three finger swipe down or really whatever you want it to be. Uh, hides and unhides the taskbar. So if that seemed really complicated, don't worry. Just look at my video description and I explain everything there. Okay, the other thing I really miss about uh, Windows 8.1 is the ability to share from any screen. Now what I've done is I've assigned the five finger swipe left in Touch Me Gesture Studio to make that uh, share. And so now from any screen, I can just swipe left and you'll see this share menu come up and I can share whatever I have open, whether it's an app or whether it's a movie or a video or, or a, an article. I can just go and then uh, share whatever I'm looking at. Okay, last and also in my opinion least is tablet mode. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter into tablet mode. Okay, so now we're in tablet mode. Now you can see the taskbar loses a lot of the apps. Also in, uh, in tablet mode, you have no access to the desktop, no multiple desktops. And everything that you run will be in full screen. Uh, in my opinion, though, I feel like tablet mode is unnecessary. I can get everything I want plus more outside of tablet mode. But that said, there are still a few things that you can do in tablet mode that you can't do outside of tablet mode. And I'll, I'll show you a few of those things. Uh, for example, let's go ahead and open up this uh, music app. Uh, again, you see that black bar down there. I'm going to go ahead and hide that just so that it's full screen. Uh, what you can do is you can actually... Uh, swipe down from the side to close it if you want. So that's a feature. You just in, downloaded uh, this app and you have no idea what down. it does. So that's well, a, what it does is it enables you to use that. your computer in a more personalized manner by uh, creating custom touchscreen gestures to side, and mapping them to actions. Split screen view. Let me give you an example. Let's, ahead and Let's say you want to show the touch keyboard when you do a two finger swipe up. Just go ahead and pick two finger swipe up and click show touch keyboard then the plus button. Now when I do one two finger swipe up it will show the touch keyboard. But it kind of like doesn't go away when I want it to. So let's make another gesture. Two finger swipe down some of these hide the, the touch keyboard uh, plus on the taskbar now and it i can show it you, you know, and i can hide files, it whenever i want well some that's options. in any app uh, not just the touch me app. To. So okay, let's and say that was it. I opened uh, the calendar app. If you app. found this video helpful, Two fingers swipe be up. sure to like this Two video. Swipe down. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. So, Thank you very much for watching. The touch me Windows Store app doesn't actually make these gestures work. All it does is it makes a gesture file. You need a gesture engine to actually make the gestures come to life. We have one of those. Just click Get Touch Me Engine, and it'll open up Internet Explorer's Hit Run, and that'll launch our installer, and then just click Install. Now it's going to do a bunch of stuff like download the latest version, install it in the right place, yada, yada, yada. No one cares. But as soon as it's done, if your Windows 10 PC me, has a touch screen, then all of the gestures will be functional. Just as easily as using your mouse or so, We'll show you how in this video. Some gestures that we think are really helpful. Or two -in -one device By clicking use our favorites. Keyboard. And there's a lot, so if you want a tutorial on what they all do, just click the WTF button. Or rotate the display. All right. Otherwise, you can Get out there, make some creative gestures, let us know what you like, and let us know if you have any corner of your screen, new gestures. Or by have fun. Your finger in from the right edge, then tapping the tablet mode tile. When you switch to tablet mode, the start menu and all your apps run full screen, and everything's spaced out a little more to make things touch-friendly.
In addition, the desktop's no longer accessible, although you can still access your desktop items from File Explorer by selecting your desktop folder from the Quick Access pane. Lastly, your app icons on the taskbar also disappear in tablet mode, although you can get those back too. We'll show you how later in the video. When navigating Windows using touch, just remember, anything you normally left-click with the mouse, you can also tap with your finger. So, you can tap the Start button to open the Start menu, which will show your pinned apps by default. These are the apps that normally appear on the right side of the Start menu. Tap the All Apps button towards the top of the left rail to view all the apps on your PC, which you can scroll by simply swiping your finger up and down. To switch back to your pinned apps, tap the Pin Tiles icon on the upper left. Then, just tap an app to open it up. To scroll your app's content, just swipe your finger up or down like before. You can also slide two fingers apart to zoom in if the app supports it, then pinch or slide them together to zoom back out again. To open another app, just open the Start menu again and select a different one. We'll open up File Explorer this time. In addition to tapping items you normally left-click with the mouse, you can also double-tap items you'd normally double-click. So you can double tap files and folders in File Explorer to browse your content and open up your personal files. Similarly, anything you normally right click with the mouse, you can also tap and hold with your finger, which will bring up the regular right click menu, where you can do things like copy, rename, or delete the item. Another action you can perform with touch is move stuff around using drag and drop. To do that, just drag the selected item with your finger to drop it into another folder. To select multiple items, just tap the selection box beside each one. If you select the wrong item, Hey everyone, I'm Lane with Windows10Update.com. I'm brand new here, but I wanted to celebrate coming aboard by giving you guys a video of some awesome kind of hidden features in Windows 10. Now, Windows 10 is obviously a brand new OS for most of us, which means that there are a lot of hidden features that most of us just haven't had an opportunity to discover yet. So we're going to take a look at six of those features right now. Now, Windows 10 is a great operating system for all kinds of devices, small tablets, large tablets, desktops, laptops, and everything in between. The other tablet operating systems out there have some pretty standard features that Windows 10 actually doesn't have turned on out of the box. That brand new Outlook Mail application that we all love doesn't actually serve up notifications when your emails come in. Off to the right of the Windows 10 OS is the Action Center, and notifications from your email will show up there. However, you won't receive a pop-up notification or a notification sound when those emails come in. However, you can turn this feature on and it's actually quite easy. Here's how you do that. Once you're in the mail application, go ahead and click on the settings cog down in the bottom left hand corner. Then go ahead and click on options. Scroll all the way to the bottom and then check the boxes that say show a notification banner and play a sound. Everyone's happy about the return of the start menu in Windows 10, but there are some customizations that you can make to it that you may not realize. Of course, you can resize the start menu and even make it full screen, but along the left side there are some shortcuts that you can either remove or place in there. To change the shortcuts that you see along the left side, specifically the folders, go to Settings, Personalization, and then Start. From there, click on the link that says Choose which folders appear on Start. If you need to access your Downloads folder very frequently, for instance, go ahead and turn that on, and now it's going to appear in your Start menu. Many of us are going to end up with hundreds of applications installed on our system, some of which we use very frequently and maybe we'll pin those to the start screen, and then others we won't use that often and it's going to be harder to find them. Now if you're trying to find those applications in the start menu, there's kind of a hidden feature. If you click on any of the numbers or the letters above the application, that will take you right into a jump list. From there, tap or click on the letter associated with the app that you want to launch. Of course, you can always launch applications using Cortana. If you just type the name of the application that you want into the Cortana search box and hit enter, that application is going to open right up. In addition to typing right into Cortana, you can also activate Cortana via voice, but you will need to turn this feature on. In addition, this feature and Cortana in general will only be available if you're signed into Windows 10 using a Microsoft account. 
To activate the voice activation feature for Cortana, open Cortana, go to the menu on the left and go to the notebook section. From here, go to settings and then turn on a Cortana. By default, Cortana will be set up to recognize anyone's voice, but if you don't want your friends to be able to walk into your room and activate her, you may want to set that up so that she only recognizes your voice. There's one more thing that I want to tell you about Cortana. If you right click on the taskbar, you can change Cortana to an icon. So if that search bar is taking up too much room, changing it to an icon will make things a little bit cleaner. In addition, if you don't want to use Cortana, you could actually hide her entirely from the taskbar. All right, this last tip has to do with Microsoft Edge, Microsoft's brand new internet browser in Windows 10. Now, just like most modern web browsers, the address bar doubles as a search box. That search box uses Bing as the search provider. If you do want to change that for any reason, that is something that you can do, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. All right, so as of right now, when I type anything into the address bar here, it's going to search using Bing's search engine. However, I can change that to any other search provider, even sites like YouTube and Twitter. The way you'll go ahead and change that is to go ahead and click on the ellipsis or the three dots in the top right corner here, then click settings, scroll to the bottom and click view advanced settings. Scroll to the bottom of that page and you'll see search in the address bar with. If you haven't changed this, you'll see that it's set to bing.com. Now when you click this, I have the option to change it to Google here because I've already set that up. However, you may not see another search provider. So what you'll do is click Add New, and then you can select from the different search providers that are shown here. Now, in case you don't see any search providers here, note that these websites have only shown up here because I have visited them. So right now, I don't have Yahoo in this search box. However, if I go ahead to yahoo.com, Now if I go back to that area, I will see that Yahoo is an option as a search provider. So this is even possible with other sites like YouTube. So if you prefer to search for videos, you could actually set that up as well. I've been Lane with Windows10Update.com. Thanks for watching. This video tutorial focuses on the Windows 10 operating system and specifically we're going to look at my favorite Windows 10 features, tips, and tricks. As I've said in the past, I am a big fan of Apple computers but I'm also a big fan of Windows computers. I use both almost equally and so in this tutorial I'm going to focus on a few of the things that I wish I had that I miss when I'm on a Mac. And the first one I'm going to show is called AeroSnap. At least that's its official name. I like to just call it Snap. But the idea with Snap or AeroSnap is that let's say you have two windows open or two programs open and you would like to arrange them so that they're side by side. Now of course you could do this the hard way. You could just click up at the top and get them in just the right spot. You could then resize them so that you can fit the part that you want to see on the screen. And so you could really spend, you know, a good 30 seconds or a minute getting this just right so that you can have these two windows side by side so you can easily use them simultaneously. Well, using AeroSnap, you can really quickly solve that problem. The way AeroSnap works is you just go to the top bar of whatever program you want to work with and then click on it and hold the mouse button and then pull it to the right or the left. It works either way but you have to pull it as far off screen as you can. Once you do that, you'll notice a transparent rectangle appearing in the center of the screen. You can see it there, now it's gone, there, now it's back. Once you see that transparent rectangle, you can let go and notice what it did. It perfectly sized this window so that it takes up exactly half of the screen. And then it popped up at the left with other windows that I have open, other programs that I have open, and I can choose which one of these I want to have appear at the left. I'm going to go with this one here. So I click on it, and now I have two windows perfectly sized. I can read the newspaper here on the left, and I can take notes on the right. So the official name of that is AeroSnap, and I just love it. 
all the time when I'm on a Mac computer, I go to try to do that and it doesn't work and I always wish that it would on a Mac. Now a feature that's somewhat connected, somewhat related to this one, is if you want to go back to full screen. Let's say I want to go back now and use Microsoft Word in just full screen. Well, yes, I could just click this button here to maximize it. Or you can click on the top bar and push it up to the top of the screen, let go, and it goes full screen. So that's a related feature in Windows 10. Now those two features, arrow snap and the top of the screen making something go full screen, those have actually been around for quite a while, going back to Windows 7. So if you have an older version of Windows, this still should work for you. Another nice feature in Windows 10 and in some of the previous versions of Windows is something that I like to call Shake and Show, but I think the official name is Arrow Shake. And the way this works is Let's say you end up with lots of different windows open. This happens to me all the time. I use way too many programs all simultaneously. I have way too many windows open and the screen gets very cluttered. Sometimes I just need to simplify. And like I said, there's this feature called Arrow Shake. And the way it works is you can go to the top bar of a program, click and hold on it, and then just give it a shake or a couple of shakes. And you notice what happened. It minimized everything else I had except for that particular window. So if you look down at the bottom of the screen on the taskbar, you'll see that these programs are still open. I can tell that they're open because they have a bar underneath them, kind of underlining them. And if I put my mouse on them, I get a little preview that pops up. I believe that's called arrow peak is what it's called. But anyway, it gives you a peek into what that window or that program has going on. But anyway, they're still open, but they're minimized. They're out of the way so that I can focus, in this case, on Microsoft Publisher, and I can use that without being distracted. Now, when you want these programs to get back up and be visible again, the way you're supposed to do that is to go back up to the bar and give it another shake, and they reappear. Now, to be honest with you, the shake and hide, that seems to work a little better for me than shake and reveal, shake and show. And so you'll have to give it a little practice. Uh, sometimes it takes me a, a few shakes to get everything to come back. But in this case, it worked very well and very quickly. All right, a couple other tips and tricks about Windows that I really like, especially in Windows 10, are ways to get to the desktop. So, like I said before, I tend to have way too many windows open, but sometimes I just need to quickly get to the desktop. To do that, in the lower right corner of your Windows machine, there should be a small rectangular shape. And if you click on that in the very bottom right corner, click on it, it should hide everything. Everything's minimized down here to the taskbar, and it takes you directly to the desktop. You can move things around, you can use the recycle bin, whatever's on your desktop, you can interact with it. You can click that button again to maximize everything back to the way it was. Now, let's say you're typing up a document, you're just busy typing, your hands are on the keyboard, and you don't want to take your hands off the keyboard to use the mouse to go down in that corner and click. There is a keyboard shortcut that you can use instead, and it's Windows D. So just hold the Windows key on the keyboard and then tap D, and that will hide everything and show you the desktop. That's what D stands for. And then if you tap it again, Windows D, it brings back everything that was minimized. While we're talking about keyboard shortcuts, let's take a look at a couple others that are very important. And this first one goes way back to Windows 7 or so. And what it is, is it's a way to show all of the windows that you have open. What you do is you hold the Alt key on the keyboard and then tap Tab. And you can see what it does. It gives me basically a menu of, in this case, five different programs and windows that are open. And I'm just continuing to hold Alt, and then I'll tap Tab, and notice that it highlights a different one each time. Let's say I want to switch to Publisher. I'll just tap Tab a few times till it stops on Publisher, and then I'll let go of all keys, and Publisher now is the foremost program that I have active. I can go Alt, Tab again, and I can switch back to the Edge browser. And now that's at the forefront. So Alt-Tab is really a nice, very useful tool. If you want to take that a step further, you could use a different keyboard shortcut called Windows-Tab. If you hold the Windows key and then tap Tab, look what it does. It gives you a small version of each of the windows, each of the programs that you have active on your computer. In this case, you don't have to keep holding the keys. I've released my hands from the keyboard. I'm not touching any keys, and yet all five options are up and available to me. Now I can select which one to bring to the forefront just by clicking and it comes forward. Let me do that again. Windows tab. Everything is brought up in a menu basically for me to choose from 
and I can select the one that I want by clicking and it comes to the forefront. Now there is another way to get to Windows tab and that's this button here in the lower left corner. It's called Task View. If you click on that button, it's just like doing Windows tab to bring up the options. So those are two different ways to get the same results, basically. Now one other wonderful thing that you can do in Windows tab is notice in the lower right corner, once you've done Windows tab, it gives you the option for a new desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, new desktop, and it's given me a second desktop. I could even add a third if I want to, a fourth. Once I've done that, I can just switch between desktops by clicking. So this is my second desktop. If I do Windows Tab, I can get back to my first desktop. Windows Tab, I can move on to the third or fourth. Now, why would you want more than one desktop? Well, one reason is it helps you to keep things separate. So maybe you're doing some work at home and you don't want to get it mixed up with your personal stuff. You could make a desktop that's just for your work-related programs and materials. So let's say I want to use Word on this desktop. One way to do that would be to go back using Windows Tab, go back to Desktop 1, and then do Windows Tab again, and there's my Microsoft Word document, and I can click on that and drag it down to Desktop 3, let's say, and now it's available to me there on Desktop 3. Okay, so this is kind of nice to have different desktops. All right, two more features I'd like to share with you features that I just love about Windows 10. One of those is the search button. In the lower left corner, when you click on search, it lets you search Windows. And you can type in a program. Okay, just typing in Google brought up Google Chrome, and I can click on that to open it up. You can also search for documents by title and also by the content in the documents. Okay, so I can type in quiz, and it brought up a file that I have with quiz in the title. You can see down across the bottom, there's also options to search for music, find results in documents, find images, just lots of different great search options. Now the final feature in Windows 10 that I love that I want to share with you today is called the snipping tool. And the snipping tool really is, I think, one of the best features that's buried in Windows 10. A lot of people don't even know it exists, and they would use it a lot, I think, if they knew it did exist. And what the snipping tool is for is it's for taking screenshots. It's for taking snapshots of things that you have on your computer and saving those for later so that you can use them, let's say, in a PowerPoint presentation or a Word document or whatever. So let's look at it. To activate the snipping tool, what you need to do is go down to the lower left corner of the screen and click on the Search Windows button and then just type in Snipping. When you do that, you should get a result that appears. Next, just click on it. It opens up. And it's just this little bar, uh, this little toolbar that appears. Once you see this toolbar, what you need to do is arrange the screen the way you want it to be to take your screenshot. So let's say I want to take a screenshot of part of this article. Okay, I would just make it look the way I want to make it look. And that might include using Control minus, Control plus to make the text bigger or smaller. It might involve using this scroll bar to get the part of the article I would like to capture. But once I have it the way I want it to be, I use this toolbar from the snipping tool to click New. And notice that the color of the screen changed a little bit. It went kind of milky white. And my mouse cursor has turned into a plus sign. At this point, all I need to do is click and drag around what I would like to capture, and then just let go of the mouse button. And the snipping tool has taken a screenshot of that web page. Okay, there's the screenshot. And now if I want to, I can annotate on this. I can use a pen to draw on it. I can use a highlighter to highlight different parts of this image. I can delete if I need to delete. And then I simply click Save Snip. I can save it to the desktop if I want to, or to pictures. And I can change the type of image that it's saving as if I want to. I could save it as a PNG, yes, or I could save it as a JPEG or one of these other options. I am going to stick to PNG and I'll click Save. If I want to, I can change the name, but I'll just click Save. And there on my desktop now is an image that I have taken as a screenshot. Now, if you really like the snipping tool, if you think you'll use this over and over, I highly recommend that next time you start it up to use it, you go down to the taskbar, right click on it, and choose Pin to Taskbar. That way, 
Once it's closed, from then on, you should have access to the snipping tool. Quick access here on the bar, and you can just click on it to open it up. So those are some of my favorite Windows 10 tips and tricks and features that I miss when I'm not using Windows. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video tutorial, and please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students, and watch for a new video at least every Monday. So you've been using Windows forever and you think that you know everything it has to offer. But I'm here to tell you that you're wrong. Windows has lots of little hidden features and tools just hidden away that you may have never seen or heard of. Some of them are very minor features and others are actually